Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Rosie and Bill show. Our guest tonight is living proof that working hard, taking a leap of faith and believing in yourself is a recipe for success. Please welcome to the Rosie and Bill show an artist whose journey hasn't always been easy, but the road he's on is the one he's meant to travel. Robbie Johnson. Hi, Robbie. Welcome to the show. Hi, Rosie. Hi, Bill. Thank you so much for having me on the show. I'm, I'm looking forward to this. It's going to be fun. Same well, here. Rob, yeah, Robbie, I have to tell you, um, I've been looking forward to bringing you back since uh, a few weeks back. Uh, you were on In the Spotlight, and we kind of touched on some of the aspects of your life's journey. And I could tell early in the conversation, we had to have you back, dig a little bit deeper because it's just an amazing story. And I think Rosie did a great job really kind of summing that up in the intro. So what I'd like to do is a couple of things. One, take a trip a little bit north and then turn the clock back just a little bit. Well, actually a lot because I noticed that when we were around the same age, some significant things happened in our lives when we were both around five years old. Yep. When I was around five, my parents got divorced and I went to only being able to see my dad every couple of weeks or every month. But around that same age, you went through something a lot more traumatic. So can you share that story with us and, and how that impacted you as a young boy and a young man? Yeah, so at age five, uh, my parents and I—I I remember this. It's—it was, I mean, the worst evening ever. We sit down for dinner. We're at the table, uh, four boys, my dad, my mom, and my dad goes, "Hey, after <clears throat> after dinner, I have something to tell you." And we get all excited. We look at each other. We're like, "Oh my God, we're going to Disney. We're going to Disney." Oh. I mean, we we thought it would be the best gift ever, you know, best surprise ever. And he brought us in the living room and told us that daddy was leaving. And he he didn't have the time to explain anything. We just ran to our room screaming and crying. Oh it God. was horrible. And because, you know, when you're five, your foundations, it's <laughs> it's mommy, daddy, family, the nucleus, and, and, and it was shattered. And really, it, it really... It broke me, and and I had to start a new Robbie. <laughs> and mm -hmm. it's it's weird because I have memories of before the incident, but I can see images, but no emotions. It's really, it, it's really as if I started a new life, and that five year old boy is uh, hidden deep inside of me, somewhere I cannot reach. So it's, it's, and sometimes I do get there and it's, it's not pretty right. uh, because mm. that five-year-old will never understand, you know, what happened. Of course. Never. There's no way a five-year-old can understand that. And, and he doesn't want to understand it. He doesn't want it to happen, you know, period. You don't want yeah. that to happen. So, so yeah. So I, I, I never, you know, and, and I, I'm good because because of that so i never see i i carry it with me but it's not like a, a heavy burden where you know mm. i'm i don't know i'm um uh, you know abusing substances or have you know dependence or stuff like that um no it's it's really i i started a new life and at the same time we moved so and also my my father abandoned us he started a new life didn't tell us, got remarried, had uh, the, 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 the woman had two kids and all that. So we have stepbrothers and step, a stepsister and we didn't know about it. It was, it was really, really weird. Uh, hmm. We'd see him very, very, we saw him a few times. And then later on, his new wife was like, you have four kids, you know, you should see your kids. And she kind of you know, forced him to see us. So we started seeing him again, but very, you know, once a year or something like that. Wow. And, Robbie, uh, I have to interrupt you. Did yeah. your mother ever give you any insight as to why he nope. left? And and you never asked him about it later in life? Like, nope. Wow. No, there was no explanation, nothing. I mean, my grandma would 
sometimes talk about it where and she would describe him in uh not a very pretty way <laughs> that wasn't and his she, his mother she, was your your mother's my, mother right my mother's oh. yeah my grandma on my mother's side and because she knew the man and very well and uh his flaws and everything and and Looking back, it's a good thing that he wasn't around. Mm. Yeah, he's not a he's not a great he's wow. not a great person. Yeah. Hey everyone, thanks so much for tuning in. We appreciate each and every one of you. And we also appreciate our first and longest running sponsor of the show, Tom and his team of insurance professionals at the Malin Agency. If world class customer service and doing business with someone you can trust is important to you. Give Tom and his team a call today for all your insurance needs. Well, you segued into the next question, which was about your grandparents and that they had a very positive impact in your life. What are some of your favorite memories from that time? Oh, you know, growing up uh, without my dad, my mom, you know, single mom, four boys. It was it was crazy. And, you know, we had uh pretty rough for me uh it's kind of different from my brothers because they were older i was the youngest and I, I guess i was hit the hardest uh with poverty and all that mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so back home it wasn't uh you know it wasn't disney <laughs> however when every summer we would go to my grandma's place in hartford connecticut and it was that was disney world <laughs> over there and we would just go on road trips with my aunt and my cousin steven and we would just visit the u.s you know all the east coast all the the experiences there you know the old forts and uh frontier town and uh, christmas village and uh, the theme parks and all that so it was it was a total it was like you know, home was here and, and with my grandmother, it was it was so far apart, mm. but it was so great. And we would spend the holidays there. There was a bunch of gifts. They would work. My grandparents would work, you know, multiple jobs so that we have a nice summer, a nice, nice holidays. And also every long weekend, uh, my godmother, she she was incredible. She would <clears throat> after her night shift, she would get in the car, drive eight hours, pick us up and you know, rest a little bit and then bring us to Hartford uh, without sleeping a full night. It's, it's, it was, it was, wow. she was, she's an amazing person. And uh, yeah, but my grandparents, they did so much. Uh, my grandmother, uh, she was the, she was an entertainer, the center, you know, of attention. And uh, I think I picked up a lot from that, from, from, you know, from her for entertaining. And my, my grandfather, Leo, he was quiet, but had a lot of wisdom. You know, he, he didn't, you know, he, when he would talk, it would mean something. It would be deep. Mm. And so that was very nice. And he was, you know, would, he would work wood and all that, fix everything. So I, I just, you know, look up to him and picked up on, on many things. Wow. And Robbie, I have to say that, um, uh, when we talked on In the Spotlight, that was right around the time when More Than You Think came out. And uh, so, as you're sharing this story, that that's really what inspired that song, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's truly what inspired the song. And it's funny because um, I think I said it uh, in the previous interview, but, you know, when I write songs, I just I just let it out. Mm -hmm. And and this was inside of me and it, it, it just came out. And I was very happy, very thankful, you know, that this came out you know away from me to say thank you to my grandparents who are up there mm. and yeah i mean they, they were really amazing uh grandparents and and then they moved uh and you know in the song i talk about a lake and they did move mm. to a place right next to a lake and we would go there every weekend and during that time that was the only day in the week on sunday that i would eat a real meal, a full meal. Mm. So I would just eat as much as I could because I knew, you know, I wasn't going to eat for the rest of the week, you know, to my uh, you know, satisfaction. Uh, I would just go to school and, and drink water for lunch. That's all I had. Mm. Even if I took the bus to go back home, there wasn't much to eat. So on Sunday, 
man, that sausage and yeah. potatoes or rice or, I mean, I just <laughs> fill up as much as I could. It's pretty, uh, yeah. So it, it was great that they were around and could help us like that. And, and Robbie, uh, before Bill asks his next question, I, I, I can't not ask this because it quite often when someone has trauma in their childhood, one of two things happens, either they repeat it or they say, absolutely not. And I know in Bill's case, he did not repeat it. But it to me, it's from what I've heard you say, just in the little bit that we've been talking, that you are like really taking care of your children. Oh, yeah, 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 totally. Yeah, I don't want to reproduce that. And <clears throat> of course, you're right. The human being, uh, either be good or bad, you, your youth, it, it always feels like home and you always want to go back to that. And it's, it's, it's so weird. I don't know why it's like that. Uh, but yes, you have a tendency of wanting to go back you know, to your roots, to your home, to what it was. So, so it is, I'm not reproducing it, but it is a struggle. Sometimes, you know, it's like, oh, there's a pattern here. You got to be careful. But uh, no, I mean, <clears throat> I've been with my wife uh, almost 30 years now. Wow. So yeah, we were uh, high school sweethearts. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, we're, uh, we're, we're working it, you know, and uh, we're dedicated of, dedicated to to make it work you know for the kids and everything so yeah it's 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 i mean it's a, it's a challenge but it's it's a nice the the payout is amazing right yeah it it truly is robbie and but before i ask my first music related question i just wanted to add on one more thing because there's something i heard and i just wanted to clarify this with you because i think it goes along with what you and rosie were just talking about in terms of kind of breaking that cycle and, and really d doing it the right way and am i correct is, did you do something pretty special when it came to your kids names and your father-in-law versus your father and their names because I, I thought i had yes. heard that and it was one of the most powerful things that i think you can do it was just amazing and i just wanted to see if that was really the case yes um uh... So there was no way my kids would, you know, go by my last name, which is my dad's last name, because I, he abandoned us. And later on in my life, I just, at one point I just called him and I said, Hey, you're independent, kind of heartless. And you lived your life without caring about us, without, you know, ever uh, reach, you're never reaching out and all that. And you were doing fine and I was doing fine as well. So that's our relationship is over and you're mm -hmm. no longer my dad. So I, I rejected him and there was no way my kids would, you know, go by his last name. Cause I, and myself, you know, I would in school, I would write my name and for my last name, I would just put an X. I didn't know back then I was going to be Robbie Johnson, but I knew I, w I wasn't going to be uh, his son, you know, so sure. it was an ex. And when my uh, when when my wife got pregnant, I said, they're going to, you know, your your father, her father is so good. Everybody loves him. He's <laughs> he's good with everybody. If he hears someone needs help painting his house, he will just go paint the house. He will go help. And he's always there to help and never expecting anything in return. He's, he's really a great, great role model, a great guy, fun to be very funny, fun to be around. And so I'm like, yeah, so he deserves, you know, that my kids go have, you know, his last name because he, he had only, two daughters so it was kind of done for him mm. his last name you know and mm. stopped there but i had a son <laughs> so so he was very very happy and and uh the other thing that's crazy is that my son's name is pierre hugo and uh his name is hugo <laughs> so, wow so he's his name is hugo lachance and my son is pierre hugo lachance so it just it will continue. Wow. 
Yeah. That is awesome. That is truly awesome. And I appreciate you sharing that, Robbie, because like I said, when I heard it, I thought it was a, one of the coolest things I've ever heard done for the absolute rightest of reasons. So kudos to you for that. And, yeah. and thank you again for sharing that. So, um, <laughs> and what, I have to what, admit, it's, so, it, I'm sorry, go ahead. I just want to add what's funny is that my daughter's name is Rose Alice. And uh, my wife, uh, because it was a girl, she had to pick, she had the, she could pick the name because it's a girl. And if it's a boy, I pick the name. So for my daughter, it was Rose Alice because it's, it's uh, her grandmother's names, Rose and Alice and to make Rose Alice. So when she got pre pregnant with my son, I said, I knew she was going to ask, you know, so like, I will pick the name, but don't, don't say anything that has Hugo in it, you know, like Hugo something or, and <laughs> because I knew she was going to ask. And every time I say, I'm never going to do something, I always do it. Because <laughs> I already know it's going to happen deep down and I reject it. So I was like, okay, you can, you know, shoot me names, but nothing with Hugo. She was like, okay. So she sent, you know, she's sending me some names, texting me some names and all that. And I come up with some names and one night she comes home and I come home from work and she's like, I have a name, but I, I'm not sure. And, you know, and it's like, come on, shoot it. And she said, well, Pierre Hugo. And I said, that's it. That's, that's his name. Wow. Yeah. So you did do it. <laughs> I, I did it. I did it. And it's, <laughs> And I knew it was going to happen. That's why I said, <laughs> no, never. Every time I say never, it always, always happens. So I'm never going to be rich. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never going to be a multi-billionaire. Oh, no, never. There you go. Yeah. I think there's a song in there somewhere, too. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, Robbie, when it comes to music, another interesting aspect, I think, of your journey is that unlike a lot of you know, many of the other artists that we've talked to, they started really early on in their yeah. life with music, pretty heavily, in fact. But that wasn't really the case with you, was it? No, totally not. You know, it's it's not like at six years old, I was in front of a mirror, you know, with a, a brush or something and singing and seeing myself with a, <laughs> you know, in an arena with a crowd. It wasn't that at all. Maybe an actor, you know, a Hollywood actor, maybe, but not a singer, songwriter, you know, an artist. And it just came later on in life, you know, growing up in poverty, uh, I had to use my imagination a lot, you know, to mm -hmm. make up for everything I didn't have. So uh, I'm very, very creative. So later in life, I started writing songs. And and it's funny, I started because I, I worked in a factory and there was a, a new guy that started working and he was a singer. Mm. And I, you know, I was interested by that. And, you know, and that night I was working 12 hour, 12 hour shifts uh, and I just wrote a song. <laughs> and I just, I love the process. So uh, I, I continued writing songs and just singing the songs in my car, but I never, I never went down the route of, you know, getting into the bars and singing in bars and doing the bar scene and then trying to make it as a recording artist. That, that wasn't how it happened for me. And, you know, it's very later on in life. I was, I had a life, you know, I was a sales rep on the road, selling industrial products, taking care of my family. I had very good revenue, uh, you know, in the weekends, mow the lawn, take care of the swimming pool and <laughs> the house and fix things around, fix the dryer, fix everything. And yeah, it wasn't my life. But then uh, my wife, she gave me a Christmas gift back then. She was my girlfriend, but she, she gave me a demo session in a studio. And I got to say, Back then, it was the worst gift ever. I was like, Why? Because I didn't consider myself, you know, being an <laughs> artist or a singer. Uh, yes, I was writing songs. I was singing in the car, singing in the shower. But it wasn't like, I was like, that's never going to happen. See? <laughs> Every time I say never. <laughs> and, uh, so so she, she, she gives me the gift. And they gave it to me before Christmas so that we would have the song for Christmas. So I'm at my in-laws and they're like, oh, and it's my mo my mother-in-law's birthday. But then they hand me a, a letter and they're 
they have phones and they're filming. It's like, oh, what's happening? You know, and I open the letter and I pretend being happy. In the video, you can see that I'm like, <laughs> oh wow, what a great gift. But I I'm really why? You know, I I don't want to be a singer. I, I I'm never gonna be an artist. What what is this? You know? <laughs> so but still, I went to the 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 session with my father in law, and I decided to do one of my you know feel good uh, country rock song. I'll be there rocking and rolling, and it was really just so that everybody has you know have, everybody would have fun. You know, myself, my father in law, the players, the musicians, and all that would have a great day in the studio, a great session. And so that's what I did, and I I wasn't you know I had no apprehension and. I wasn't going there to cut a hit or become a major artist. It was just, let's be done with this, you know? <laughs> so, and go back to my normal life. But back then I was, I wasn't that happy with my life and my wife saw it. Mm. And so, so I went to the studio, I started singing. The guys were like, Whoa, wait a minute. Who are you? <laughs> Where are you from? You should be in Nashville, buddy. You just, you sound like what's on the radio. There's really something there. You're, you know, and it was an original song that I had written. And they were like, man, this is really good. You should really go to Nashville. That's where it's happening. And I was like, ah, oh, no, come on, guys, stop it. Let's just be done with this. And, but that day, the energy in the studio, I felt at peace with myself. And going hmm. back home, listening to the track in the car, it was like, oh, okay, all right, I guess, you know, I just needed that little push because I knew it deep down inside. I just didn't want, you know, to face it. I, I was scared, I guess. Well, that's pretty amazing because, you know, listening to your songs, your voice is, number one, it's your tone is very unique to me. And I, but it's really powerful and you have a great range. I mean, the, everything is there. You know, well, and the you. fact that you didn't see it like and realize that you had a lot of something special is really kind of crazy. <laughs> well, I got to tell you, earlier we talked about, you know, family not wanting to, you know, break the family. I think that's the reason, because I was thinking, OK, you become an artist, you become successful. You're always on the road. Your kids <clears throat> won't recognize you when you get back home and they won't have any respect for you. They won't look up to you because you're never there. Yes, they'll be proud. They'll be bragging to their friends, but at the same time, they will hate you, you know, because you're, you're absent. You're totally, you're not there. So I guess that was the thing that was mm -hmm. stopping me. So I, and it was tough, you know, it was tough. And, and uh, there was a point, you know, in those 10 years, that I had to, you know, just sit down with the kids and, and, and tell them that I'm sorry, even if it wasn't, you know, you know, crazy that I was gone, you know, the whole year and they never saw me. It wasn't that, but just the fact that I'm imposing that to them, you know, not everybody wants to have a dad that's known and where they have to be careful how they behave these, their self, you know, their self in, in public and all that. So it's it's something that you impose to them, which is big, you know, being the 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 kid of someone successful and known, it's 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 a lot of pressure. Yeah. So so I, I had this discussion with them and they were cool with it. So I'm like, okay, I can keep on going. Well, so see you peel away the la the layers and you you find the reason for everything. And that's interesting that it wasn't that you didn't think you could do it is that you you were reacting to a situation that you were in as a child and you didn't like the absence yeah your father yeah totally, you know? totally well it. christmas is right around the corner yes so before we go let's talk about oh santa please which is a fantastic christmas song that you wrote it's really upbeat lots of fun really gets you into the holiday spirit what inspired it and you know how can people access it all right so first i don't know if i wrote it <laughs> because it it was gifted to me really okay. uh it's it's crazy one evening 
I have a discussion with my wife. We talk about, you know, my career and everything. And, and so that night I went to bed, you know, because my family, they've made and are still making a lot of sacrifices for me to be in Nashville, for us to be in Nashville, live in Nashville and all that. And I, I went to bed feeling as if I was letting them down. Because yes, I had success. I was on the Late Show. I have some success on radio, and I have the great privilege of doing interviews with some great people like you and and all that. And 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 it's great. But I never had this, you know, life changing, career changing, massive hit that changes everything. And I, I was feeling like you know I'm letting them down, and that's how I went to bed upset. <clears throat> And the morning, the following morning, I wake up with the first line of this song. And I I did I had no intention of writing a Christmas song. That was in October. Usually mm -hmm. those are recorded in July, maybe August. And so I was like, whoa, okay, this is a Christmas song. Oh wow, it's good. And I it just stuck in my head. So it came from my dreams. It's not something that I you know, purposely sat down and said, oh, I'm writing a Christmas song. Let's write a Christmas song. It just, it just came to me. And I started writing a song, got so excited about it. And it was doing great, you know, the first verse. And then I have something of the second verse. And then I'm like, okay, let's do a love song, Kissing Under the Mistletoe. And so I write a chorus and I call my buddy Danny Rader. Like, hey, I have a Christmas song. First I called, no, first I called Clarence J, uh, who's a producer, from LA that moved to Nashville and uh, he's had a bunch of, he released a bunch of Christmas songs that placement in movies and all that. So I know he had the experience. So I sat down with him. We went over the song and he was like, ah, okay, not sure about these lyrics, the chorus, you know, he was challenging me on the lyrics, but still I went in the studio with my producer, Danny Rader and we cut the track. And Danny was excited. He loved the groove of the song, you know, and, uh, you know, the direction I wanted to to, uh, to take. And But I could tell he wasn't that excited about the chorus and the title of the song. But still, I was really excited, and I felt like this song would change my life. And I was bragging, you know, I was telling that. Not bragging, but, but I mean, I was telling that to the kids. Hey, I, I wrote a, a great song, and I think it's, it's going to change our lives and all that. And so I put a lot of pressure on my shoulders and I elevated the expectations. So I get out of the studio and I start singing the car, uh, singing in the car over the, the track. And I sing the verse. Wow, it's amazing. It's, a, it's good. It's good. And then I get to the chorus and it falls flat. Like, oh, mm. wait a minute. This is, this is just okay. So this song, it's not going to change our lives. It's that's not a hit. That's not nobody is going to want to hear this. It, it, it didn't felt like it was meant to be. So I was very upset. Went to bed very upset. My wife was like, "Hey, how did it go today? You know the Christmas song?" And and like, "Oh, it's okay." He's like, "What do you mean it's okay? You were stoked. You were excited. This was going to change our lives, and it can't just be okay." I was like, "Well, I'm sorry. It's just okay." And I went to bed upset. And believe it or not, I wake up with the new hook, the new chorus of the song from a dream. I It, it just happened. <laughs> so I feel like it was the song already existed and it was just gifted to me like that because I wanted this, this gift, this song. And, and, and so that was pretty... I mean, it's poetic because the song talks about, you know, wanting that perfect gift from Santa that changes everything for you. That's the thing you want, you deeply want, that you've been waiting for for so long. So it's it's so weird how, you know, everything came about. But uh, yeah, after I, I had the, the new hook, the song didn't want to be about a couple kissing under the mistletoe. From the get-go, it was about Santa. It was always about Santa Claus. And now my second verse that didn't really make sense made sense. Mm. <clears throat> so that's why I'm like, I didn't write this. I just found it and I just put it on Well, paper. it came through you. The inspiration came through you. You were the channel for it. And you had the wherewithal to listen to it and act on it. And that's big. 
Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, really and, and I was so excited. I called back Danny. It's like, hey, we got a book studio, Starstruck on the row, and I need a saxophone player and then uh, background vocalists and uh, drum, a real drummer, Wes Little, Sam Levine on saxophone. And he was insane. I mean, the saxophone solo is epic. And I remember in the studio after the, the session, I was by myself crying because I felt like, like I had just lived a life changing moment. Mm. You know? So it, it was pretty, pretty cool. And everybody, the, everybody was excited about the song. You know, the, the engineer at one point turned around and said, who wrote this song? And Danny is like, oh, it's Robbie. And I'm sitting in the back, you know, just being myself, <laughs> kind of goofing. And he, he turns around, he's like, no, 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 come on, guys. Who wrote this song? You know, he was expecting yeah. like, you know, hit songwriters, triple play writers, a bunch of guys. And Danny goes, no, 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 I, it's, it's Robbie wrote this song. And he, he turned around, he looked at me, he was like, oh, as if I was a god. And then, and then he <laughs> said, Robbie, this song is epic, man. <laughs> It's like, oh, well, thank you. You know, it was, it was really nice. And it's funny because a lot of times people are like, wow, Robbie, this is an amazing cover. It's like, no. It's right. Just, because, it's, yeah, it's just. It's an original <laughs> song. It's like, really? They're like, well, it sounds like a classic. It sounds like a it standard. Does. You know, so, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. folks, it's Oh, Santa, Please by Robbie yes. Johnson. You can look it up, it download YouTube. it, stream it. Yeah. Yeah. You can find uh, there's a lyric video on YouTube. Oh, Santa, please. Robbie Johnson, R O B B Y Johnson. And uh, yes, all the DSPs, the digital service providers, Apple News, They'll have Spotify, it. They, they have it. It's a green, uh, the artwork is, is, is green. And it's me opening a present. <laughs> and that was my idea. And uh, for the photo shoot, uh, I brought this little gift and I put a, a, a light inside of it. And I was like, Hey, I just want to open it. And the light comes out, you know, that's the gift. And, uh, the guy was like, Oh yeah, yeah, that's cool. That's a great idea. And that's what I, that's what I used for the, for the artwork. Love it. Love it. Well, Robbie, thank you so much for coming on the Rosie and Bill show. I know you already did in the spotlight with Bill. And I'm really happy to meet you. And I know Bill, of course, is thrilled to have you back. And and we wish you all the best with, of course, the Christmas song, but but your whole career. And so thank you so much for sharing with us. Thank you so much, Rosie. Thank you so much, Bill. It was a pleasure. Anytime, anytime we can have, you know, conversations like these. It's it's really it was really nice. Thank you so much. Love your questions. <laughs> Aw. All right. Well, folks, thank you for tuning in and we'll see you next week. Feels like I'm going uphill since the day that I was born. Had to learn how to run before I ever knew how to walk. Poor mama did all she could when my dad ran away. Still I grew up thinking I grew up wondering If I was the one to blame There's a road I'm on I can sing that song There's a road I'm on Never far from where I'm from There's a road I'm on Every mile, every song I'm looking for something I've been missing for way too long On this road I'm on Oh, my daddy left me Was a beating up guitar And a hole inside my soul Running errands through my heart Now I travel around the world Singing each and every night And I'll keep on singing I'll keep on strumming This pain I have inside There's the road I'm on I can sing that song There's the road I'm on Never far from where I'm from There's the road I'm on Song. I'm looking for something that I've been missing for way too long on this 
This episode has been brought to you by Doherty and Company Insurance Services for all your business and personal insurance needs. Our friends at Tennis Addiction in Texas, PA, and the Malin Agency, where exceeding expectations is how they do business.